If you're new to homeschooling, you're probably getting asked a question that veteran homeschoolers find very familiar. Today, Maureen Whitman is here with very smart and very reassuring responses to the question, but what about socialization? Welcome to Homeschooling Saints, the podcast that helps you create the homeschool you love for the people you love. Our host is Lisa Maladnik, a Catholic life coach, TV host, best-selling author, and an instructor at Homeschool Connections. Hi, I'm your host, Lisa Maladnik, and today our guest is author Maureen Whitman, here to answer the question, but what about socialization? Maureen Whitman is a wife, mother of seven children, and grandmother of seven. She is co-editor and contributing author of A Catholic Homeschool Treasury from Ignatius Press, The Catholic Homeschool Companion from Sophia Institute Press, and Why Should I Learn This from Behold Publications. She's the author of For the Love of Literature, also from Behold Publications. Maureen is grateful for all the homeschool parents who helped her over the years and works to give back to the community through Homeschool Connections. You can find Maureen at her website, maureenwhitman.com. That's in the show notes, but I'm going to spell it out for you because it's Maureen spelled the usual way, but it's W-I-T-T-M-A-N-N.com. Maureen, thanks for coming on today. It's so good to see you again. Oh, you too, Lisa. I always love spending time with you. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. Um, so this question is so funny. It makes us all laugh. We all, you, you right? say, mention this question in a room full of homeschoolers and the eye rolling begins. <laughs> So, so tell us how you respond to the question of that shocked question of how right. could you homeschool? What about socialization? <laughs> well, you know, when I began homeschooling over 25 years ago, it was really the weird thing, right? It was, it's a little more accepted now and people really didn't know much about it. So it just really surprises me that we're still answering this question, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the early days, I would always answer with a litany. You know, we go here in the minivan and there and we meet other people and this is what we do. And <laughs> but one day uh, I was coming out of church and someone asked me in kind of a less than friendly way, you know, what about <laughs> socialization um, when she heard that I homeschooled? And, you know, it was just one of those moments when uh, <laughs> it sent me over the top, you know. <laughs> and I just said, yes, yes, you are so smart. Exactly. That's exactly why I homeschool because of socialization. <laughs> I love it. I love and it. I just lit up and uh, <laughs> walked away. <laughs> Didn't know what to say to that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. So, so some of the families that are listening and are going, wait a minute, what? Isn't that the thing we're supposed to be so challenged on? But, but you've got a good basic oh, okay. system for healthy socialization in your homeschool. So tell us a little about that. Well, you know, you know, you can go through that litany and, and we can talk a little bit about the, you know, all the different ways that you can um, have social interaction for your children. But I think what it comes down to is the golden rule, right? And, and, and interestingly enough, um, again, many years ago, a friend of mine who's not Catholic, who's not a homeschooler, he said to me, why, you know, do you have to defend this? All you have to do is teach your kids the golden rule. And it was just kind of one of those watershed moments where, yes, oh my goodness, yes, that's it exactly, right? Teach our children to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Then they'll be well socialized. That's all they need mm. really to be socialized human beings. Teach them to recognize all people are made in the image of God and therefore beautiful and therefore deserving of, of God's love. And, you know, make sure you're modeling that golden rule um, in your everyday life. So, you know, you don't necessarily have to tote the kids all over the, the city in the minivan, especially right now in a pandemic, um, you can still get socialized. Just teach them and live the golden rule. And what more challenging place to live the golden rule than in the family where everyone feels safe to let their hair down and not necessarily be on their best behavior at all times. Right, <laughs> right exactly. Right. We have little mini societies in our own homes, don't we? Mm -hmm. With a lot of different ages and temperaments and not lots of really cool challenges to navigate. So right. give us give us um, a way to think about the process, maybe something 
an analogy of some an analogy. Kind. So, um, I mean, one thing that that I used a lot when I was first homeschooling, one of the things that made me really think about this was the analogy of the workplace. You know, when I was in the workplace, I did not work with 25 other people of the exact same age from the exact same neighborhood. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. I work with people of all ages, of all kinds of backgrounds from all different kinds of neighborhoods. I think homeschooling mirrors real life so much better than site-based schooling. We are um, giving our children exposure to, to people of all different ages and, and all different backgrounds, rather than being in a classroom for eight hours a day with 25 kids of the exact same age. Mm -hmm. in the exact same background. We're all being, yeah. and this is another conversation that we've had before, but all being schooled exactly the same way as if they were exactly the same child. Um, yeah, you know, you have to have so mm -hmm. much respect for school teachers because when you have 25 children in a classroom, that's 25 different learning styles, <laughs> mm. 25 different personalities. It must be really hard. And But as homeschoolers, we can really address that individual child. Right. Mm. And what a great thing to model to our children that their individual selves, even though we are the body and we are for each other, that their individuality is important, that it was created by God and that the cultivating of that individual person is precious. Right. Exactly. You know, we are all unique and, you know, we want our children to be comfortable in their own skin. We don't want to throw them into situations where they may be bullied or made fun of because they're only expressing who they are, you know? Um, you know, I have a daughter I was telling you about yesterday who was painfully shy as a little one, you know? We used to have this mom's Bible study at church and, um, you know, you leave the kids in the, uh, you know, in, in the little daycare area and, and, you know, the teenagers are babysitting the kids. And she would stand in the middle of the room, you know, wintertime with her coat on, wouldn't take her coat off, arms on her side, looking straight forward with her eyes closed. Aww. for the entire hour because she was so painfully shy she did not want to talk to anybody she didn't want anyone to realize she was there Aww. I mean it was it's about as extreme shy as you can get right yeah and you know so everyone you know non-homeschoolers you know family members neighbors would always say oh you need to put her in school you need to put her in school you need to fix this you need to put her in school well I felt that we needed to do the opposite. Um, first of all, there's nothing wrong with being shy. That's who she was. Mm -hmm. And I felt that in our home, she could get comfortable in her own skin. She could get comfortable in who she is and know that she is loved. Because at home, you couldn't shut her up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my husband would come home and I'd say, all right, you need to go talk to her because I, I can't, <laughs> I'm talked out. But, you know, in front <laughs> of other people, she wouldn't speak. So I knew that she had it in her. Um, you know, I have an aunt who was painfully shy. And um, whenever my mom would always tell stories of when company would come and she would hide under the table, the dining room table, because she didn't want to have to see people. And mm -hmm. my grandpa would drag her out and force her into those situations. And, you know, here she was, 74 year old woman and still shy, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't want that for my daughter. And um, sure enough, you know, she's a grown woman now, you know, in her 20s. Um, she's a social butterfly. You know, when she went off to college, she, she started a couple of different clubs at her university, um, led several different groups. You know, she's a go-getter She in the, in the business place. You know, it took a few years, but when, by the time she got to her teen years, she really was comfortable in her own skin. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have to throw her into a large classroom setting to get her there. We did it in a way that she knew she was loved, right? And it's, mm -hmm. you know what? I, I have other another son. I have a son who's who we used to call shy. And he said to me one day, I'm not shy. I'm introverted. And I like being introverted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there's nothing wrong with it. So, and when he has something to say, he'll say it. You know, right. he's comfortable saying it. So I think you're right, Lisa. Yeah, I, I think um, we need to celebrate who they are. And we can do that in our homeschools without worry. Yeah. And I love that. Almost like you've talked about this. And I know there I've heard other homeschoolers use this analogy too, 
um, this idea that they're they're kind of like little plants that aren't quite ready to be out in the elements yet. Yeah, yeah right. Our, our homeschools are like a greenhouse, you know, or a hothouse where those plants can grow and develop. You don't want to put your tender little seedling out in the frost. You know, if I turn my computer around right now, you'll see it's no way out. It's Michigan. Mm -hmm. I would never put a seedling out there. Yeah. Instead, I have it in the hothouse where it can get strong, right? And 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 be ready for the outdoors. And I think it's the same way with our kids. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I, it's so much about learning in a healthy environment, a healthy family environment, just encourages the natural process to happen in the way it's meant to happen in that child on its own timetable. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So what do you say to people who say, well, aren't all your homeschooled kids going to be nerds? Right. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm lucky, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I guess we need to define nerd. You know, what? what is, why is that a bad thing? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, um, Bill Gates is probably the biggest nerd there is, and he's one of the richest men in America, so... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The revenge of the nerds is all around us. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and believe it or not, there are nerdy kids in public school. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I had a, a, someone I knew uh, in high school. Was, he was the biggest nerd in the school, right? He was that kid. He had one other friend who was super nerdy, too. And we had the broken glasses with the tape and the whole bit. And um, he and I sat together at our 10-year class reunion. And he, um, today he's a very successful businessman. He has his own computer business company, um, married to a beautiful wife, beautiful children, a very happy life. Um, but in high school, I mean, he was just tormented. Mm -hmm. I mean, just bullied and tormented. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, what's so wrong with someone being smart or someone taking a high interest in a specific subject and, and really wanting to explore that subject or, you know, someone who's not interested in what it means to be cool or what the right fashions are, you know, hanging mm -hmm. out with the cool kids. Right. And our, our homeschooled kids, like you might see older girls playing with dolls with other girls because there's no, we're too cool to do these yeah. things. Like they can have a natural progression of, of following their own interests to such a degree that there are a lot of jokes and stereotypes about homeschoolers as kind of being in law school in the third grade. You know, I mean, that's an exaggeration, <laughs> but our kids do get that chance to really find themselves. And yeah, it's so funny you say that because I say that all the time. <laughs> One of the things I love about homeschool kids is girls play with dolls a little bit longer mm -hmm. right because they don't they're not all of a sudden they go to school and and they're told that's a sissy thing or you know a baby thing to do mm -hmm. and so when they're ready then they stop playing with dolls I mean they're not going to be playing with dolls you know when they're 18 mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know maybe they'll grow up to be collectors and make you know a fortune doing that but <laughs> <laughs> you never know with homeschool kids but yeah, I think you're right. I think I want to protect that childhood. And I don't want them to feel like they're a baby because of a special interest they may have. Mm. And the child who has had that greenhouse time is less likely to be caught up in the culture. Our kids, because of computers and phones, do catch that earlier and earlier, even with our homes in our homeschool networks, that is for sure. But, you know, St. Paul said what is so resonates throughout scripture is to focus on what is good and noble and true. And so that opportunity to form them foundationally, even if they do wander into the culture for a while, which many of our young people do, they have that solid foundation and nothing else can quite measure up to the good, the beautiful and the true. And many of our young people do come full circle as a result. Exactly. You know, and you and I have talked about this in other forums in the past. I mean, um, you know, our children still have free will, right? And just like us, they're not perfect. And so, you know, homeschooling is not perfect. And if your child leaves the church, you know, don't blame yourself. That could happen, um, but you've given them a solid foundation. So when they do return, they're not landing on sand, they're landing on, on firm foundation of faith mm. and love. And um, yeah, don't, don't ever give up on that. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, what, what do the sciences tell us about how homeschoolers do as far as socialization, the social sciences? Yeah, you know, we all know the studies, don't we, about how homeschoolers um, test higher than their, their side-based schooled friends or peers. We, we hear those studies all the time, but we don't hear the stories or the studies about socialization and they're out there. Like all you do is Google, you'll find them. Um, there's National Home Education Research Institute. Um, so it's nheri.org. They do tons of research. They've been around, goodness, I think 25 or more years, maybe 30 years doing this kind of research. Um, there's research out of all sorts of universities have done them. I remember a couple of decades ago, we were living in Lansing, home of um, Michigan State University. And uh, there was a professor there. I think he was a poli-sci professor. Uh, my husband knew of him. He wasn't particularly homeschool friendly, but he did a case study of, of homeschool graduates. And he looked at um, his criteria to see if they were socialized properly <laughs> was, are they engaged in the community? Do they get married at the same or similar rates as their non-homeschooled peers? Um, do they vote? Do they go to the library? Uh, are they on public aid? Those kinds of things. And what he found is that they were more engaged in the community. They went to the library a lot more. <laughs> mm -hmm. They married at similar rates to their non-homeschooled peers. Um, the only big difference was he didn't have a single homeschooled student who was on any kind of public aid. Wow. So that was the only really big difference. So, you know, his study showed that, yeah, these kids are in the community and active in the community once they graduate. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how do you define socialization? If that's how you define it? Well, yeah, we are, we are socialized just fine. <laughs> um, there's another study and it may have been from National Home Education Research Institute. Uh, I'm not sure, but this again was, you know, a decade or two ago where they looked at um, those test scores that we talked about, right? Those, those standardized test scores but they looked at them um, under the microscope of race, socioeconomic status, and the parents' education. So we know those three things make a big difference in public schools. Race, your income, your parents' education make a big difference on how well you do in school. So what they found is in homeschools, they made almost no difference. Wow. Right. I mean, the only difference, big difference was if you have a PhD and I just have a, home, a high school graduate, you know, diploma, your kids are going to do a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, there was, there was no, the difference was negligible. So race, economic status and education, absolutely not a problem in the homeschool environment. Right as opposed to the site-based schools. Wow. Now, right. the, the, you're mentioning the PhD reminds me of a, of a story that you told me about a couple of PhDs who kind of chucked it all and built their own home oh, kind of in the yeah. wilderness and, and started kind of oh. schooling their kids their own way. Yeah, was that the Colfaxes? I can't remember. So that, that was like the first homeschool book I read. I think it was Trouble in Paradise. And you know, I'll find it. We can put it in the show notes. I think it was okay. Trouble in Paradise. So it was, yeah, it was two college professors. And it's funny because they were, they, I think they were teaching at St. Louis University. So St. Louis is my hometown. And um, which is known for being kind of a liberal university. And they thought it was too conservative. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they were kind of the, right. The original homeschoolers were not um, the evangelicals. It was the dropout hippies, right? Mm -hmm. But they dropped out of society, you know, went, moved to a mountain in California. Um, <laughs> the kids were homeschooled by building their own house, <laughs> raising awesome. goats, um, I mean, I think a couple of the kids didn't even read till they were like 10 years old. And uh, the only books they had were their old college textbooks from when they were teaching at the university. And yeah, these, they had four, I think four sons, I think three sons and, and an adopted son, I think, but they all grew up to be PhDs and medical doctors. One of them served, um, I forget, was under President Obama, maybe. So yeah, they turned out okay. They they were well socialized. They know how to speak to human beings. They know mm -hmm. they're able to go to university mm -hmm. uh, and, and make a difference in the world. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, they were totally unschoolers. Uh-huh. 
I mean, they, they weren't even, um, you know, using any kind of set curriculum. And they were on the side of a mountain. They, were, they didn't have co-op and they mm -hmm. didn't have homeschool band. Or homeschool. online classes like we have No now. online classes. This is 30 years ago, maybe 40. This is way is back in the 70s, you know? Yeah. So yeah, you, you can, even without all those things that we do, right? Driving our kids all over town in the minivan, even without those things, those kids turned out okay. Yeah. And, you know, you and I were looking at a fun list of 100 famous people who were homeschooled and there yeah. were presidents <laughs> and movie stars and singers. And of course, some young people were tutored or homeschooled because of their careers. Right. But, but I mean, like the, yeah, if you want to mention a couple that well, you know, like, stood like Teddy out. Roosevelt, right. I mean, Teddy Roosevelt. So, you know, homeschooling looked a little different 200 years ago with some of these people, right? They had tutors, but with like Teddy Roosevelt, he was really sick. He, he had a lot of, he had asthma and some other medical issues. And so he just spent a lot of his time just outside exploring the outdoors. He was a great nature naturalist. I mean, he, mm -hmm. you know, he was well known for that. And mm -hmm. yeah, he had tutors and he did a lot of reading and, you know, and did a lot of studying, but um, he also did a lot of exploring because homeschooling, right? We all know takes far less time than, than site-based school. So you have more time to do those social activities or those things that interest you. In his case, you know, going to the outdoors. Um, another one that I think is a really great inspiration for homeschoolers, especially if you have a child who has ADD, is Thomas Edison. Oh. It's ADD or ADHD, one of those, the original, it was originally called the Edison trait. <laughs> Right, because Thomas Edison was totally ADD. I mean, I ADD kids that. are right. They're the great inventors. They don't just sit in a desk working on papers. Right, their minds are all over the place. And mm. so Thomas Edison's teacher in sixth grade told Thomas Edison's mother, "Your son is addle-minded." Mm. So in other words, he's too stupid to learn. The greatest inventor of all time. So, well, that's arguable, but <laughs> his mom <laughs> yeah. knew that the teacher was wrong. Right, right. Right. She knew the teacher was wrong. So she brought him home. And what did he do? He spent his days taking stuff apart, putting it back together, making his mom nuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know what? He turned out okay. You know? Yeah. Um, God bless Mrs. Edison. Yeah. <laughs> right. She knew her son. <laughs> no one right. loves your child more than you. I, I mean, trust your gut. Right. Right. I mean, even mm -hmm. the best teacher, she doesn't have the time or energy to give one-on-one -on -one instruction like you do to your child and she doesn't love your child she didn't bear that child like you did mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah thomas edison's mom knew he's not adult minded he just can't sit still mm. you know yeah <laughs> so you look yeah. at uh, teddy roosevelt who became a naturalist and a conservationist and a president yeah. and a war hero and everything else right. you know this poorly socialized guy who spent a lot of time alone or wandering <laughs> around in nature the poor kid um and then you look at you know all of the all of the different types of homeschoolers there are out there um what are some ways even outside the home i know it's tough during covid but what are some ways that you homeschooled i mean kind of socialized your kids outside the home right well you know you know, when the pandemic first hit at Homeschool Connections, we did some virtual things and we're looking at maybe doing some things over Christmas break or, um, you know, maybe doing them again in the spring if this continues on, some reading groups and just getting together prayer groups and things. But if you can get together physically, there are so many opportunities out there. And if you don't have them in your local community, start it. Don't sit around waiting for someone else to start it. You start it. You know, the local co-ops. We just had it doesn't have to be a big formal thing. We had a family little co in our family room, a little co-op, um, just four, three or four families. We did that co-op, you know, 10 or 15 years. It was just a little history thing. Everyone, you know, the other families brought their kids. We all learned history together from kindergarten to high school. Hmm. And, you know, and the other moms would take the littles, the babies and go outside and play or go down to my basement. And so it can be something simple like that, you know, um, maybe you have a little back to school party um, or, you know, a graduation mass at the end of the year uh, sports, you know, where I live, our homeschool sports team well, competes in the same league as the public and Catholic schools. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, some, some people I know, they will join 
um, like a public school team, like Tim Tebow, right? So Tim mm. Tebow is another famous homeschooler who's so awesome. Um, yeah. You know, right? He's such a charitable, good, kind person. Mm. And in addition to being this, you know, great football player, but that's what he did. His parents moved him to Florida just so that they could participate in school sports. But you may have a, a league like us that's just as good as the public schools or the Catholic schools and, and join your own league. So look for those things, drama groups. Um, again, our local drama club, they put on these amazing musicals every year and plays. And um, our music group, Ditto, uh, they won a few years ago, first place in the state for best uh, band. So we have wow. band, symphony, choir, you know, uh, if you're out in a rural place where you don't have any of that, maybe you just, your church youth group, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, maybe your child, maybe you do volunteer work for years. We did, we cleaned the library at our Catholic school. <laughs> wow. so we were actually at the Catholic school once a week, you know, working on shelves and, um, you know, getting, keeping everything in order. And they let us borrow as many books as we wanted for free, you know, oh, so yeah, you know, we, we, my husband would take them to the soup kitchen, you know, and so, you know, helping them develop a heart for the homeless, mm. again, getting them out of, of their comfort zone and, and interacting with people of all different ages and socioeconomic backgrounds. And, you know, so they're not just hanging out with 25 people, mm -hmm. same age, same background again, you know, mm. um, yeah, we've day, done some, I'm sorry, we do, we've done some things that could easily be done on either Zoom or in person too. We've had poetry slams where the kids get up and oh, recite poetry, which you can distance very easily. You get one kid at a time yeah. getting up in front of families that are sitting in their own separate groups, talent contests, you can do the same thing. You could do, and, and I've seen stuff like this on Zoom too, where a whole bunch of people get together How and they take turns doing fun stuff and, and hanging yeah, out like we had you something said. called book buddies and it started out where kids would do book reports but it kind of morphed over the years where the kids they might do a little musical number maybe they play their violin um, or read poetry or um they could tell about a science project even yeah or put on yeah. a short skit or whatever yeah they just had to do some kind of presentation and they didn't have to right it's like if you're too shy and that's and that was the thing right no one had to do it. Eventually, the shy kids would join in, right? Because mm -hmm. eventually they get tired of watching. They want to participate. Yeah. So, yeah, those are just great opportunities because you're around people that you're comfortable with, um, who, you know, aren't going to make fun of you, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever. Yeah, you can present your nerdy thing. <laughs> yeah. And just to back to doing okay. a play like with shy kids, we yeah. had children in our Shakespeare group that were so shy. Some of them actually had something called selective mutism and they had been in regular schools and were not doing as well. I mean, they're very yeah. brilliant children, but um, they started out as like spear carriers and the, and the extra fairies and things like that in our Shakespeare plays. And as they got older, they were at all the rehearsals. They got to be with their friends. They got to continue yeah. that connection in that little society that was so safe and they gradually graduated to a few lines and then a bigger yeah. part and and some of them played major roles in our plays wow. as they got older it's really remarkable what can happen as you said in the greenhouse right right and exactly the greenhouse I mean my kids you know we did a Shakespeare play for a few years and they never got to the part where they were in the big lead parts they just had no desire you know <laughs> they did a lot of the background stuff building sets they did what was fun for them, you know, and a couple of them had those parts where like, they're the person who carries the spear or, you know, they're the, the fairy or the angel, you know, whatever, um, <laughs> the background people, you know, Shakespeare plays and, or they might do makeup or, and that's what they enjoyed doing. I mean, they, mm -hmm. you know, I had one kid who was in charge of doing like the, like, that's a big job doing the curtains. Oh, yes. <laughs> Right? Doing it at the right times. <laughs> and making sure everyone's going out when they're supposed to go out and right. All the yeah, queuing all the stage people. managing. Yeah. 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 So, you know, um, it's okay if your child doesn't want to get out in front and be the star of the show. We need those people in the background too. Mm -hmm. The show doesn't go on without them. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and we could do a whole episode on this, but there are wonderful books out there now about 
the power of introverts out there in the marketplace and how they pair well with extroverts and how they complement them yeah. and their strengths. And there's so much that can be said about that. Um, just leave us with some final thoughts about what about socialization? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one thing I, that I I'd wanted to mention today was um, a few years ago, Bill Nye um, said something about, about homeschoolers. And I kind of wanted to address that. He, he said, uh, someone asked him, like, we could really use better science curriculum in the homeschool world. And his response was, um, the rest of us out here want your kids to appreciate society and the importance of working together in school and in life. A person working alone will probably not build the future 797 airplane, for example. It takes people who can work with and around people. So carry on. Mm, so very dismissive. Very dismissive. I mean, he just totally dissed homeschoolers with that mm. comment. And um, what struck me is if he had done the scientific thing, right? If he had done his research before he made that comment, he would have learned a couple of things. One, the inventor of the Learjet was homeschooled. <laughs> I love it. So yeah, a homeschooler just may build, you know, the future 797 airplane, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so yeah, if he can get it wrong, you know, your, your mom, your neighbors, they may get it wrong too. You know, with a few Google clicks, Mr. Nye would have found that there is all that research that studies that you and I talked about um, that show that homeschool children are as socialized, if not better, um, than their peers. So, you know, maybe what I'll close with is one thing we didn't talk about too much was what do we say or how do we handle the naysayers, right? How do we handle um, the mother-in-law or the father or whoever who is not supportive and who is worried about socialization. And um, sometimes we have to recognize that these are our children, right? We need to do what's best for them. And our parents or whoever may just have to sit back and watch. And we may just have to let the fruits of our effort bloom before they know that. Um, and a great story that I would love to close with on that is my dad, when we first started homeschooling, his, he asked, what about socialization, <laughs> right? And, um, and he wasn't too sure. And what about academics? You know, I mean, he knew I was smart, <laughs> right? But he didn't, but I don't have a teaching degree. How can I teach without a teaching degree? And so my dad, being my dad, um, asked those questions and then stepped back. So I was really fortunate. He wasn't the kind of parent who would needle me or ask me because I did have family members who would, every time I would see them, <laughs> mm. would bring it up. But um, he just asked that one time. So many years later, I was working on Catholic Homeschool Treasury, which is a compendium of essays. And I asked my dad, dad, you should write an essay. He was just kind of kidding, right? On uh, what it's like to be the grandfather of homeschool kids, what it's like to have this crazy, insane daughter, <laughs> doing this crazy, insane homeschool thing. And we laughed. And um, it was maybe a month or two later, I get a letter in the mail. And the essay, by the way, did not make it into the book because um, it was too late, but it actually was published in um, Catholic Home Educator, which was a little magazine at the time. But anyway, I get this letter in the mail and on, on the, I open it up and there's this uh, paper, you know, several papers of hand, his handwritten essay that he wrote out. And there was a post-it note that said, now I'm gonna cry. <laughs> um, it said, you're not crazy. You're doing exactly what you should be doing, you know? Mm -hmm. And the essay was all about how watching his homeschooled children blossom and how he believes that these homeschooled kids will be the leaders of the future. And that the way they are being socialized and the way they are learning history and, and the way they're um, being formed in the faith will be the ones who will step up and be our leaders in the future. So I just wanna encourage anyone who is feeling like, how do I answer this? What about socialization question? teach them the golden rule and, and just let the naysayers have their say, but in time they will see the fruits of your effort and they may like my dad become your greatest champion. Mm, beautiful. 
Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Gosh, everybody, thanks for listening. Um, there's a few things for you in the show notes. We'll refer back to some of the things that Maureen mentioned. And uh, please hold on for our short feature coming right up. Hello, my homeschooling friend. I'm Celeste Behe. This podcast segment is called The Homeschool Housefly. And this calendar month is called The Homeschool Desperation Month. Why is it that the shortest calendar days end up being the longest homeschool days? Well, I don't know the answer to that, but I do have a tip for brightening up gray January school days. Are you ready? Make placemats. Yeah, that's right. We hit upon this idea in January of 2008, right before the start of an early Lent. My kids were copying illustrations of scourging tools, and since they were so proud of their artwork, I laminated the drawings with clear contact paper so that they could be used as placemats. Kids got so carried away that they made extra drawings for visiting guests who might want their own placemats bearing images of whips and flails. Now, that may sound odd, but let me tell you, three times a day, when the kids sat down to meals, right before them were reminders of the Lenten season. And that got me thinking. The next time I was at Walmart, I picked up some inexpensive placemats with pictures of, oh, I don't know, fruits or something on them. I pasted over the fruity images with photocopied lists of verb forms, covered the lists with clear contact paper, put them on the dining table, and guess what? Every time my kids sat down to PBJ sandwiches, they learned a bit about past participles. Think about the possibilities here. Designing and making placemats during dreary winter days can be a fun and educational activity for your kids. And those placemats can be an easy homeschool win for you. Just call it placemat pedagogy. What else can you put on a placemat? Well, in a world of GPS navigation, it's easy for kids to live in a neighborhood without ever learning the street names. Consider printing out a street view picture of your area and then helping your child to label it before giving it the placemat treatment. Other placemat worthy options? How about a handwriting practice sheet of Bible verses or a kid created montage of saints emblems? Anything that your kids can write, draw, and cut out can be put on placemats. And once those info-packed placemats are on the dining table, your kids will be chowing down on knowledge along with their mac and cheese. I'm Celeste Behe, and this is the Homeschool Housefly. That's our show for today. Our program is sponsored by homeschoolconnections.com, where you can get online courses for your grade school, middle school, and high school student. Learn from the experts and make your homeschooling easier. Be sure to leave a review and share this podcast with your friends. And we'll see you next time here on the Homeschooling Saints podcast.